If you do these kind of lifts for too long with too much weight, especially with bad form, your spine is going to need a break. And it might literally break. Chest up. Shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. Today we have a literary metaphor for a legitimate issue. Now, I don't remember what book or poem or old piece of fiction this was in, but there was a metaphor about an albatross around your neck. I remember learning about this in English class in high school. I was asleep for half of it, so I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember the albatross. An albatross in this context is a big old school seabird or something, Moby Dick, whatever, right? It's something that is around your neck and you can't get off of it because it's just heavy and it weighs you down. What we're gonna talk about today is the albatross of the home gym owner. Now we can all agree, home gyms are awesome, right? Yes! But the one major drawback is the lack of access or space for equipment. If you've got the standard home gym set up, a little rack, barbell plates, pretty much every single lift you do is done with the barbell. Back squats, front squats, overhead press, bench press, good mornings, deadlifts, all with the barbell. And while this is not necessarily a bad thing, I tell you guys all the time, you need to be focusing primarily on those kind of lifts. It can be an issue if you only do those exclusively. In terms of stimulus to fatigue, right, the amount of gains you can milk out versus the amount of fatigue it causes your body, the amount of recovery it takes up, barbell lifts are on the lower end of the spectrum. You will get lots of gains from them, no doubt, but eventually you're gonna pay a price. You're gonna have to pay the piper. And I just had to pay the piper myself. I haven't taken a deload in almost three months. And you guys know my setup. I don't have a whole lot of equipment here. I pretty much have maxed out all my space. So this week I was on my second or third set of good mornings, which was after deadlifts, which was after squats. And my low back was like, nope. I think it was a sprain. It just tensed up and got really sore. You know, I kind of felt like a little stretch in my low back. It's probably just a sprain. It wasn't anything major, but I had to stop the workout short. I've been kind of, you know, when you have that low back pain, you kind of walk around gingerly, but nonetheless, it's still affecting me. And I was wearing a belt on that exercise. So quick note for you guys too. You got to understand if you have a weak core, a weak low back, weak glutes, weak hamstrings, just throwing on a belt is not gonna magically bulletproof your low back. But this precisely is the home gym owner's albatross. Unless you've got lots of space and equipment and money to spend, you are going to be limited to axial loading for pretty much all of your training, especially lower body and posterior chain. So axial loading is essentially any exercise that requires spinal compression to stabilize weight, particularly a barbell, as it moves through space. So this includes squats, deadlifts, overhead presses, Olympic lifting, big compound barbell lifts done on your feet. Bench presses do not apply here because your body has the bench or a seat as support. The same would go for using any kind of machine. And also calisthenics do not qualify. Now you can add weight to calisthenics. You could put on a belt for pull-ups, dips, but the weight is in your center of gravity. It's not bearing any force on your spine. So aside from overhead press, the upper body's kind of in the clear here. Those of you who skip legs, you're dismissed. But my guys who do train legs, when you're in the gym, you have all kinds of options. You've got a whole rack of dumbbells. Dumbbells are inherently less stressful than barbells, just given the weight difference. You've got machines, right? So you have options at your disposal there. But again, think about the home gym. I want to train hamstrings. You're shit out of luck. Good mornings. Romanian deadlifts, stiff-legged deadlifts, conventional sumo, right? It's all axial loading. You can't really escape it. Even if you've got flawless form, guys, and I think you guys can tell my form on most of my stuff is pretty buttoned up, this still is going to happen. Depending on your genetics, your injury history, your form, your leverages, it might happen faster than for other people. So you have to be mindful of axial loading. And here are a few ways to circumvent and prevent this from becoming a problem. But before we continue, ladies and gentlemen, it's the algorithm. So first thing, like I mentioned, you may need to keep the volume down for these kind of exercises on a week to week basis. And like I mentioned before, don't be afraid to deload. Okay. I know there's a lot of contention about, oh, is a program deload week necessary? Should you take one as needed? Generally speaking, most programs are going to call for a deload every four to 12 weeks. 
Four is probably a little bit too much too soon for most people, but I'll tell you what, I'm on, what, about 11th or 12th week of no deload, and I got my baby injury. So now I have to deload, right? So it kind of all comes full circle. Whether you plan it or don't plan it, you're gonna have to take one sooner than later with tons of barbell lifts. Now the next point, don't be dogmatic. Okay, you don't only have to do the squat bench and the deadlift. If you are doing back squats and you got some neck pain, maybe your wrist, elbows, low back, don't be afraid to switch to front squats. Same with deadlifts. If you're getting really fatigued from normal deadlifts, try sumo. Try SLDL or RDL for a period of time. Throw in some higher rep stuff. And even on the bench press or overhead press, okay? If your wrists are getting sore, your shoulders are getting a little bit hurt, don't be afraid to swap out that for dips or push-ups or some other kind of chest exercise too. Also consider different equipment. Now this kind of conflicts with what we said at the beginning. If you have limited space and a limited budget, this might not totally be possible, but get as much as you can, guys. You guys see my space. I'm pretty much taking advantage of it. I might have space for like one more bar. I'm considering getting something like a safety squat bar. I already have the trap bar. I've told you guys why the trap bar is a total must have an easy bar, less stress on the wrists. Additionally, of course, I've told you guys this as well, you gotta have dumbbell and kettlebell handles. Not saying you need to, but if you're gonna go for dumbbells and kettlebells, get the handles, it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money ultimately, so make sure you have that. Dumbbells and kettlebells, again, based off of the sheer weight difference compared to barbells, they're gonna be easier. You're gonna be able to get in more positions, less overall fatigue with those. Also consider machines and devices, okay? So a pull-down system, like a cable pulley, a glute ham device or a glute ham raise, maybe a hyperextension platform. That's gonna let you work your lower body without as much stress. And of course, you're going to want resistance bands and other kind of prehab or rehab equipment. So get resistance bands varying capacities, yoga mat to stretch out on, make sure you're stretching, do your foam rolling, do some stretches, maybe light recovery, go for a walk or a jog every now and then, hang from a pull-up bar, decompress your spine after a heavy squat or deadlift day, right? So all these things are going to help you reduce axial loading and keep it more managed. But fundamentally, guys, if you're doing nothing but these lifts, now if you're a power lifter, probably less so because you need less overall volume to gain strength. But if you're in the aesthetics and size game, man, you need volume, okay? And tons of volume on barbell axial loading exercises is going to catch up to you. So keep this in mind, guys. Be mindful of axial loading. Don't shy away from it. Don't use it as an excuse. Oh, I'm not going to train legs anymore. Don't do that. Okay, but you do need to be aware of these factors and how they can impact your training and your recovery. So this has been it guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Tell me what you want to see next and I will catch you next time.